going in the tunnel. Whoa, oh, problems. Trouble. Gearhart gets turned around. Shelter got into the back of him. Now he slows down. Gearhart into the wall hard in the tunnel turn. They oh, start to damage. slide behind him. Joey Nowhere Miller's to go involved. on the racetrack. A lot of damage. Ooh. Looks like the 47 came in there. Philip Magilton, there's the 07. Billy Tanner involved. It looked like Bobby Gearhart has such a bad angle going in the in the corner in the tunnel turn that he tried to move up a little bit to get a little bit better angle, and then he made contact. See Bobby right there. That's a hard hit in that tunnel turn there. You get upwards of 190 miles an hour on that long pond straight where there's Tom Birdie, the 25 car, Joey Miller, the 32 on the inside, and something happens going in that tunnel turn, and you make some hard contact, and you see Bobby stuck up against the outside wall right now. We're getting a report from the Arca Remax officials that they may red flag this race to try to clean this situation up and, and attend to the drivers here. Sure enough, the red flag in the hands of the flag man now as he's about to display that to the field. They will, they continue to show the yellow, but he does have the red flag in his right hand, telling everyone to slow down. I'm guessing they'll figure out where the best place to stop the cars on the racetrack will be. Yeah, the, the field has stopped over going into turn number one, so that's where they will. That's there. You see him right there. Jeremy Clements, our leader. Dominic Casola running second. Josh Wise third. Frank Kimmel fourth. That's where the field will stop. But right now, all the all the importance right now is over in that tunnel turn, making sure all those drivers are okay. Everyone's attention focused back on the back part of this racetrack. Again, a triangular racetrack. And Turn number two, we call it the tunnel turn. There's a tunnel that goes right underneath that turn. Where all the cars have piled up. There's Joey Miller right there standing with one of the safety workers. You see him walking around. That's a good sign. You see he had a, some lot of contact on the inside uh, inside of that car. A lot of damage to the left side of that 32 car. On the replay, we saw the car actually got up on top of the 32, it looked like. Joey's making his way back to the ambulance. They'll check him out. See Bobby Gerhardt having some help from the safety crew here. He's going to unstrap, get out of his number five. At, at the very least, and something something like that happens, it'll knock the wind out of you. You hit that wall and just expels the energy out of your lungs, and it takes you a few moments to just to try to get it together to, before you can even breathe. So I'm sure that's what Bobby's facing right now, and that was a hard, hard hit. And you know, one of the worst places for that to happen is going yeah. in the tunnel turn. That's, I've always thought one of the most difficult and challenging turns in all of NASCAR was a tunnel turn here. You know, that's where. Uh, you know our racing legend Bobby Allison had had the, a serious accident back in 1988 that essentially ended his career the same year that he won the Daytona 500 for the third time I believe and right over here in that tunnel turn so. what makes it so difficult we see another one of the drivers back out of the car what it makes it so difficult right now for Bobby Gerhardt is his car is turned around and facing the other direction and so the driver's side is right up against the wall so you see the safety crew member trying to help Bobby Gerhardt as far as how to get out of that car. Bobby going to try to undo the Hans device there. He's, that's a good sign that he's able to do all that stuff himself. You can see him working his hands and taking his helmet strap loose and trying to get his Hans device loose. And that's uh, that's a situation like that when you have a hit like that. That's when you really appreciate having a Hans device and some sort of a head and neck restraint system that will keep your head from moving any farther than uh, than it than it than it has to. There's the 39 car right there. That's Corey Robinold. A lot of damage to that car. He was on pit road. There you, again, you see Tom Birdie in the 25 car. The safety workers that are attending to Bobby Garrett are actually standing between the safer barrier and the the old outside wall. That was Philip Magilton that we saw earlier getting out of his car, the 47, and making his way to the ambulance as well. So I believe right now we're still just waiting on Bobby Gerhardt to climb out of the number five. It, it may be difficult for Bobby to get out of that car because if he's if he's touching that safer barrier, you see how much higher that safer barrier is than the top of the door. And there's a barely enough room yeah. to, to crawl out between the top of the door and your roof. So right. if he loses another three inches or so being up against that wall, then he probably cannot get out of that car right now. And you see the 
tow truck is going to try to pull that 25 car of Tom Birdie away from the five so they can move the five car away and get and get Bobby Guerra out of that car. And just to touch on some of the safety issues that I know not only and we see Bobby Gerhardt now climbing out of that car. You know Gerhardt could have got out of there a lot quicker obviously if there was the need. I mean right. if there was a fire or something he would have been able to climb out of that car immediately. But he had more than one issue there to deal with. He had the wall on one side. Well he also had Tom Birdie's car on the other side. And now he's going to walk the tightrope here on top of the wall here. <laughs> and the safety crews are going to help him with yeah. that obviously. Help him down as you mentioned a hard hit yeah. there for Bobby Gerhardt real, in that turn real hard hit right there in that turn again speeds upwards of 190 miles an hour going into that corner and it happened right as right about the time you're going to back off going into that corner so he is running maximum speed there let's see if we can take a look back at it see Josh Wise makes it three wide on the inside it looked like Bobby obviously Bobby in the five and the 60 uh, Patrick Shelter made contact I thought it looked like maybe that the five of Bobby Gerhardt tried to move up the racetrack a little bit to get a little better angle in. then you can see the 32 and the 25 and the 39 all come in there together make hard contact with Bobby who's yep. hung pinned up against the wall. Here's another view of it right here. There's a the contact right there the five just clipped the left front corner of the 60 of Patrick Shelter but turned him around in absolutely the wrong place and he's sitting right up here vulnerable right now and these guys have made some contact and see the 32 and the 25 get yep. together then the 47 yeah comes in a Phil Magill and he actually went underneath the 32 car at the very beginning of that we also saw Kimmel move by on the inside we ride along now with Bobby Gerhardt it's not over wow that you would think it was over yeah, but that, that secondary hit even sounded worse than his initial hit to the outside wall Again, Frank Kimmel early on went by that accident, and Michael McDowell, currently second in the points, he went by later on in the accident in the grass. 